Great to have you again on this series. If you've been with us over the last two months or month and a half, we started with the Public Art 101 uh, that Katie hosted. Those are going to be, if they're not all up uh, on our website, available as a resource heading into the future. If you miss those, you can pull those up online and see them whenever you want. The same will be true for these workshops that we've been doing with Bill Dambrova. Um, we're delighted to have Bill again. Uh, this is the third in a series of four workshops on some of the digital tools that artists use and Bill has used to develop some large scale public art projects. Uh, as you may know, Bill is a native Arizonan, an ASU graduate with a BA in studio art. And I think his career thus far speaks to what artists can do beyond the studio and beyond the gallery. Certainly exhibited uh, here and around the nation, but he's also worked as an exhibit designer specializing in natural history museums, zoos, and aquariums. And right now he's consulting on a large scale project uh, about the deep sea for the Monterey Bay Aquarium. That's scheduled to open in 2022, I think. So he's just finished off overseeing uh, the fabrication installation of a 6,000 square foot terrazzo floor. It'll be at the rental car center Guy train station when it opens in the coming year or so. And with that, we're delighted to have you. Again, if you want to sign up for next week's workshop, go to phoenix.gov slash arts. And with that, I'll turn it to Katie Stiegel. Katie uh, ran the one the ones and uh, she'll be here to introduce and help guide us through this one as well. So welcome one and all, and thank you again for, for joining us today. Hi there, welcome everybody. Um, just a couple of housekeeping items as we get started. Um, as you enter the room, if you could please mute yourself, we are going to be recording these workshops um, and all of the audio so we can post it on YouTube later on and have the content available permanently. So putting yourself on mute during the presentation really helps us make sure we get clear audio for that. Um, if you have questions during the presentation, please type them into the chat box. And at the end of the presentation, we will have about um, 20 to 15, 20 minutes to go over presentation questions. Um, and we'll take them from the chat box and work our way down. Um, and then I can unmute you or you can unmute yourself at that time if we need to add some um, additional clarifications to the questions. Um, we'll go for about an hour. Here and um, I see Barry Sparkman from the Office of Arts and Culture has joined us as well. Um, and I'm not sure if we have Elizabeth Grahalis on the line, um, also a project manager with the Office of Arts and Culture. Um, but that's, that's who we are, and um, we're glad to be offering this today. And thank you so much to Bill Dambrova for providing all this incredible content. Um, today, we're going to talk about SketchUp, which is Modeling software, um, and I am going to turn it over here to Bill. Okay, I just okay. myself. Can you hear me? Okay, I'm going to share my screen. All righty, get rid of this. Okay, welcome to Navigating SketchUp. Um, today is gonna be a little bit uh, more heavy on the demonstration side and less on the tutorial side, just so I can show you, uh, you know, everything that you could do with SketchUp uh, to use to create public art projects, especially if you're coming at it from an artist point of view and less as a designer point of view. So in this workshop, I'm gonna show you how to set up my SketchUp workspace take an image file of my Terrazzo floor design and drop it into a 3D architect's rendering. So that image file is that JPEG file that I uh, created in Photoshop in the first workshop. And then I'll turn an Illustrator line drawing into an AutoCAD drawing file and import it into SketchUp to create a 3D object. And that's the file that I started working on in Illustrator using the pen tool. And then I'll show some basic SketchUp moves like push, pull, click, drag, click, how to orbit and zoom in your model and shortcuts along the way. So as I'm kind of demonstrating, I'll try to throw out what I'm doing with the mouse and which uh, buttons and stuff I'm, I'm hitting. Uh, 
And then also how to place 3D objects and exact GPS coordinates in SketchUp. Um, so again, I just want to encourage you to play with SketchUp, get on there and mess around with it. Uh, there is a free version that you can use that's on the, on the internet, it's just a web version. Um, you can go to SketchUp for their tutorials, but this guy, Justin, Justin Gies, I think is how you say it, is my favorite YouTube YouTuber for SketchUp Essentials. So he has really easy, basic stuff, you know, that he'll go into details about buttons for 30 minutes, you know, separate buttons for 30 minutes. And then um, he has really uh, more intense uh, tutorials about different types of plugins. Plugins are um, third-party software that attaches to SketchUp to make your SketchUp more powerful. Um, thing I want to remind everybody is that I'm using a Mac. Um, command on a Mac is Control on Windows. Option on a Mac is Alt on Windows. I'm using SketchUp Pro 2018. So there could be some options and stuff on here that don't come with the free version. <clears throat> um, Want to talk about my mouse setup. Um, it's to me, it's important as an artist to have a mouse that has a little rolly ball and also a button on the top. Sometimes your mouse rolly becomes a button. Um, but what's great about this is that while you're using, I mean, most of the uh, functions I use is left click and right click. But to zoom in and out, you can, as you're working on the model, you can zoom in and out using the rolly. So zooming forward and then zooming backwards. And then this button here, you can uh, program your mouse. When you click and hold this button, you can orbit around the object you're working on. So let's say this was a 3D model in SketchUp. You click this mouse, you click this button. And I'll mention when I'm doing it in the uh, demonstration. You can rotate all around this thing as you're working on it. Um, if there's any one takeaway that you have from this uh, is to group everything, and I'll explain what that means as well. And then the mouse uh, function that you do is different than a lot of other programs, which is a click, drag, click situation. Uh, show you that right here. So if I was drawing this rectangle, I would hold the mouse, hold the mouse here to start my rectangle, and then I would click and then hold the left mouse button down, clicking with the left mouse button, holding it down and then dragging across and then click again when you want to end your, your rectangle. That's what I mean by that. All right, so I'm just going to get right into it. Um, say you, uh, let's see here, let me hide that too. When you first open SketchUp, you can go to File, New. It opens up a new window. When you first buy SketchUp and it opens up, it'll have a box um, that looks like this. And also I encourage you to go to preferences right away and just look through the preference window and see what you can uh, change to start to um, personalize your, your uh, workspace. And personalizing your workspace is really important. So I'm gonna try to talk more about that than actually how to draw with SketchUp. Because once you get your workspace set up, then it's easy. It's really intuitive to draw with this. Um, some of these I'm gonna glaze over, but um, for the most part, you go to template. It'll, when you open SketchUp, it'll start with this box saying draw, drawing template. So there's different types of units, feet and inches, that kind of thing. If you're in Australia, they use meters. Um, I like to use architectural design with feet and inches because it's more accurate. The, uh, when I learned SketchUp, it was a startup program, and the guy that taught me how to use it actually designed submarines using this. So even though it's, they call it SketchUp and it looks you know, very basic and a lot of really hardcore AutoCAD people think that this is just um, a program that, to play with, you can get really accurate drawings with SketchUp and import them into Vectorworks and AutoCAD, which is what I'm gonna show you guys next, uh, next workshop next Thursday. So set up your, uh, your, your workspace with architectural design or simple template with feet and inches. Um, it also talks about workspace. Um, I like to keep all my buttons small, but um, for this, so you guys can see them, I'm gonna increase the size of my, my toolbar here. Okay. So a little bit about navigating through SketchUp. This is what's called the toolbar. <laughs> when I first started using SketchUp, they, uh, didn't really have YouTube videos where you could just type, where's my toolbar? So sometimes I would come up here and try to click the arrow and I would turn my toolbar off. 
and then I would lose it. I wouldn't be able to find it. So uh, where your toolbar and stuff is, is under view, tool palettes, large tool set. Then it brings back your tool set there. Um, what else? Uh, this, so you have a lot of your buttons here, and this is similar to Photoshop. You have a toolbar and then some of the functions across the top. I, you can take some of these buttons and place them across the top and not even work with the toolbar. But this is just the way that I've always used SketchUp. Um, you know, these are buttons for drawing and these are buttons for navigating uh, your, your file. It always, uh, SketchUp always starts with uh, a little person there. I think she's around five foot six so that you don't have to uh, worry too much about drawing to scale, but everything that you draw in SketchUp is actually to scale. But if I just wanted to draw something, like start sketching something without worrying about how uh, the dimensions of it, just I can look at this person standing there and go, this is probably about eight feet, and then just start messing around, um, you know, creating a quick public art project looking thing, and just you can sketch with SketchUp. But you can also draw uh, in dimension, and I just want to turn your attention to this box down here, measurements. <clears throat> Hang on, my uh, tighten that up so you can watch. So pay attention to this measurements box down here as I uh, draw my first uh, rectangle. So here again, I'm using my left mouse to click, and then I can, I'm not uh, holding the button down. I'm just dragging my mouse back and forth across my mouse pad. And then if you look down here at dimensions, it's saying that it's eight feet by seven feet, and you can actually um, just use the mouse to do that, or I can type, just start typing while I'm in between clicks. So remember, it's click, drag, click, but while I'm in between clicking, dragging, and clicking, I can type eight feet, and then put a comma, and then seven feet, and then hit return, and it'll make my rectangle exactly eight by seven. And then there's another tool, this is an important uh, tool in uh, SketchUp, it's called the push-pull tool. And that's how you can just hover over a face of something you've drawn, any of these things you can do. And then you can lift this or, uh, you know, you can either lift it up or push it down. That's why it's called the push pull, I guess, pull it up, push it down. And then I'm holding the left mouse button down. As I'm dragging, I can go back down there again, where it says distance down here, and then type in 10 feet and it'll put it right at 10 feet. So you can get really accurate with that. You can use the circle tool and do the same thing with diameter. You can type in eight inches and it'll give me a 16 inch wide circle. And then you can use this push pull and just start doing stuff. So you can just play around with um, these buttons and see what they do. One of these is the follow me tool, which is my favorite. You can just hover over the face of an object. And then uh, when it's uh, found itself on an edge, you can click the mouse and then drag, and it'll drag it, drag that uh, offset. And then you can type in, say you want it to be offset 12 inches, and this, this distance here is 12 inches. For whatever reason, I always check my distance by using this pencil tool. So if I wanna know what this distance was that I drew here, I just let it hover over the point and it'll like set itself. And then I can click, and then, you know, I've got this, I'm just moving my mouse around hover over the next point that I want to see the distance of, and it's showing, again, look down here, it's showing that that's seven foot 11 and an eighth. Um, you can also use this uh, little tape measure tool and do the same exact thing. But for whatever reason, I always just use my line tool because I might end up drawing a line from there anyway. So <clears throat> um, the other important buttons on here are these this orbit orbit tool. This helps you fly around SketchUp the way that I've been doing. And then this, this guy, this little hand guy is the pan tool. So you can use this button and click it and then you get the orbit icon. And now I'm holding down my left mouse and I can look around my model, look under things. But this is what I was talking about. Now I'm using that little square button that I showed you earlier to do the same thing. And then I'm using my rolling mouse, uh, my scrolling wheel on the mouse to zoom in and out. But you can also zoom by using this, this zoom magnifying lens. Okay, and then also you can get sometimes lost inside SketchUp. You can go through walls and stuff like this, and you don't know what happened, where you are. There's ways to get back out 
to view everything you've been working on, and that's the Zoom Extents uh, magnifying glass here. So I'll click that, and it'll take me back out to everything in my model. Another way to uh, to zoom out quickly, if you look up here, um, these are different views of what you're working on. So this is isometric view. A little they use the little house to show you. This is the plan view. So looking down on the house, elevation, front, sides, left, right, and then back. So if I got lost again, I can hit this uh, top view and then use my rolling wheel and zoom out. And then it kind of got me out of being hit, like stuck in there. Um, so I'm gonna go into more of these buttons as I start doing the uh, demonstration about how to um, turn a 2D line drawing into a 3D uh, shape, more complex shape. So I'm gonna click out of this for now. And then Go ahead and open up the architect's rendering of the uh, rental car return station. It'll take a second because it's a big file. Got the beach ball here. And while I'm waiting for this beach ball, just to let you know, SketchUp is a cool program, but for some reason, it does crash um, kind of often. So there's times when I'm working on a, a file, or working on something, and I'll get nearly, you know, halfway through some complex thing, and it will it will dis literally disappear off my screen and everything that I worked on since the last save disappeared. So SketchUp does something where it you can uh, set it to save it every five minutes, and I'll let you guys find out where to do that on your own. But what it does is it creates a, a saved version. So this is the version, say this is the file that I opened, this is my main file. But then every five minutes, it'll update it on its own without you having to hit the save button. And you know that you have this uh, kind of backup file when it has this little squiggle here. And if uh, you start working on this file, the next time you open, it'll create a backup and add another little squiggle. And you, you might not know what I'm talking about right now, but down the road when you're making SketchUp files, you could end up with like uh, files with five squiggles if you keep opening up the backup file. So you just want to remember to always go to your main file and just work from there and it'll it'll just always update on this with one squiggle only. So uh, here's the rental car return station. The way that I got this into SketchUp, I didn't draw this in SketchUp. The architect had a drawing file that was already in 3D and all I had to do was go to file, import, and then you could look for AutoCAD files to import, and it will uh, allow you to import that in, and it will render in 3D. And sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't, depends on what program the architect used. So I'm gonna talk more about GPS location in a second, but I thought this was pretty cool. Um, and this file is gonna move a little bit slow because it's really big. Um, so to, to figure out uh, how to put your model directly into exactly where it's going to go on planet Earth using geolocation. Uh, you can go to, is it file? Um, yeah, right here, file, geolocation, add location. Brings up a little box. I found this really interesting. Um, I just typed in Sky Harbor rental car, return, and then hit enter. And I got the wrong one there, so I got to do Phoenix. So, yeah, so this is the one. And apparently, uh, Google and whatever this Digital Globe one, it's not updated to show the building yet. But um, so you can find the exact location using maps here. And then, um, when it says select region, it's going to select this area that's within this box. So I'm going to say, okay, and we're going to find out if the architect drew this using geolocation in his AutoCAD program. So then you hit import and it'll, it'll import uh, a bit of the map to scale. So his building is drawn to scale. So if, you know, if there's a door on here, it's going to be the right size door. And you can, that's how I always check to make sure things are to scale is by uh, zooming in on a door. Maybe this is a door and using my pencil tool. Again, look, watch down here. If that's around three feet, then it's probably right. 
So always use doors to check to see if things are scaled correctly. So again, using this uh, view button here, I'm gonna zoom out so you can see that it's not exactly perfect, but all I did was type in rental car return station. I didn't put the exact GPS location, but it's pretty close. So I, I was messing around with this, uh, selecting an object, you can use the move tool and uh, or the arrow tool and then hover over with a, a lasso type thing and then grab it all. And when you see all these different boxes, that means that this means it's several different groups and they're all nested together. But I'm gonna hit uh, command G to just group everything as one group. And it got rid of all those nested boxes so that I can move this. This is the move tool. This uh, got arrows going up and down, left and right. And I'm not going to click on here. I'm just going to click somewhere on the model and then drag this just to see how it looks. And I think this is really interesting that it um, it lines up per like perfectly. So this just shows you that you can draw things to scale. Okay, I'm going to get rid of this just to, so it doesn't slow down my my model, which it's already doing, the beach ball here. Well, I got the beach ball. Um, there is a webinar for how to uh, really dig into this geolocation so that you can get a higher res version of this. The webinar is going to be on the SketchUp website on September 24th, and it's like 30 minutes. They're going to talk 30 minutes about this thing I just showed you how to do in one minute. Uh, i got to unlock that so I can delete it. Okay, so um, just got the architect's rendering here. There's a way to look inside this, uh, the building, without having to walk inside of it. Um, and that is using the uh, section planes tool. And that's this here. Uh, architects know what this symbol means. This, is, uh, this shows that there's gonna be a cross section. That's what, uh, on your drawing plan, you'll see this symbol. So if I click section plane, let's see if I already have one up. Uh, show section planes. I do already have one up that's here already, but this is how you would do another one. You hover over a flat area and then click. Uh, go to view and then view section cuts. It's going to show you how I how this is cut using this uh, section plane. And I can I can uh, cut in further by hovering over making sure this is selected. Usually anything that's selected is in blue in SketchUp. And then going to the move tool, hovering, clicking with the left mouse, and then moving up and down, I can, I can move the section plane tool up and down. And then I wanna just turn that off so I don't have to look at it while I'm showing you guys stuff. Turn off section planes. And then this is a big file, so it's gonna move kind of clunky. So forgive me if it, I try to zoom in and it zooms way in. Um, so I'm showing you what I already did and then I'll show you how I did it. I just wanted to show you how um, accurate this SketchUp actually can be. So if we wanna look at this model from here, Ed took a photo from up on the scissor lift recently looking down at the floor, which is here-ish. Let's see, open the preview. So you can see here, that getting, like if I zoom in about to there, that all the proportions are really pretty much exactly uh, to this photo. And I did this drawing before this building was ever built. So this was a way to get a sense of what the building looked like before it was built, drop in my floor design and um, see how it was going to look uh, to the viewer. Okay. Hang on, the WebEx stuff is getting in my way. Um, so there's other ways to navigate SketchUp besides using uh, this orbit tool. There's a cool feature here with the little, little person on it and you click it. And it gives you an X marks the spot kind of situation where I can put this guy anywhere in the model. And then see this little eyeball. This means you're looking around at eye level, uh, which is, I think, five foot eight or something like that. And then if you hold the left mouse and click around and hold, you can look at things from a five foot eight perspective of a person. 
So I can look around in 360, look at the building and what it feels like. So when I did my design for this project, I really wanted to integrate my design with the architecture. So I did things like uh, I put this large white X to delineate the space between the doors of the where the train station doors are going to open up, just so this didn't become a monotonous design. And I actually created a, like little rooms within the space. So this creates a room. This other doorway open creates a room, and maybe subconsciously it you know tells people you can stand in here and you'll be waiting for the door, stuff like that. So um, to be able to drop files into SketchUp, there's different ways of doing it. You can uh, go to File, um, Import, and I'm just going to show you uh, something quickly here. Um, i got to find it, Navigating SketchUp. Just, uh, I don't want to import another AutoCAD file. I want to import a JPEG. It's going to give me all the JPEGs that I can drop in. This is my floor design. I keep uh, joking around with Barry that it'd be cool to um, put one of my paintings right here. <laughs> so that's how you can drop a, uh, it, of course, threw it in upside down, which gives me an opportunity to show you how to flip it. There's a rotate tool. You can click over that while it's selected and then flip. You can do that. Uh, you hold down uh, shift, it should. Uh, set it so it's orthogonally correct. And then this is a scale tool. It brings up those little uh, scale handles, just like in Photoshop and Illustrator. We got the beach ball again. Yeah, this is a pretty big file. There's ways to uh, make these big files smaller. And there's tutorials about how to do that. But I'm using the scale tool. Let's, you know, let's say I wanted to show them how this painting could look. I would turn off my section cuts. Try to find myself. I'm lost within the model, like I said I was before. So I'm going to go to Zoom Extents. And then drop my little guy right here at the doorway. And then you, you can use these little feet and hold down the left mouse button and move forward. And you'll move in like a, the size of a person. So then I can say like, look, there's this big empty wall here. We can put one of my paintings. Okay, so when I dropped in my floor, I tried to drop it in all as one big file. Let me show you. Oh, and just like, um, just like Photoshop and Illustrator, there's also layers. And you can find that in Windows and Layers. Um, because this was an architect's drawing, they drew everything in layers themselves. So there's like the ductwork, uh, glazing, which means glass. If I was to turn off this by unchecking it, all the glass disappears. And everything that you uncheck will uh, speed up your model also. So if you get rid of a bunch of stuff you don't need, like I don't really need these fans, I could just uncheck them or even delete them. Um, but I put my floor on its own uh, layer as well. I can remember what I called it. Earth to sky. Um, actually, I don't want to be in the layer. Just want to turn it off. So, the other way to bring an image into SketchUp, aside from file, uh, from um, doing file and then uh, import or export, is to make sure that you're in the SketchUp window, and then have your your file you want to drag in side of there somewhere easy accessible. And then click and hold it, and then drag your image right into SketchUp and release. And it'll bring it in at whatever size it's drawn at. And then you're gonna kind of hover around a little bit to make sure that you bring it in uh, onto the face that you want it to be on before you click one more time. And when I see it messed it up there, uh, that's not, let me do that one more time. So I'm going to drag it to make sure I'm in here, drag it in. I want this to be on the face, which it is right now. It says on face and group, and I'm going to click and hold and then start dragging. And I'm only going to drag it to there just so that I know that um, it's on the face that I want it to be on. 
then you can use I'm using the mouse to orbit around and then the scale button to get those these uh, handles back and then it's uniform scale so I don't have to do anything all I have to do is hold down the left mouse and then drag to get it to be the size that I want it to be and just like um, Photoshop and all that kind of stuff I would sit there and zoom way in make sure it's exactly perfect make sure my X's are exactly perfect, but I don't have the time uh, to do that today because I have so much to show you. And then the other thing you'll notice is that it's really pixelated because the file that I used, I was trying to make it a smaller file so that it wouldn't uh, slow down my program, but it's really pixelated. So what I ended up having to do to keep the resolution high, um, and another thing I can tell you really quickly. So I put this floor on its own layer and it's also, in its own group. So if I click it once, I'm going to click into the group of, I'm going to, if I click just in general once, it's, it's going to say it's, I'm in one group, which is this whole model and everything. Then I click again, double click again. Now I'm into the model and I can click and I, I know that I'm clicking my floor. So I'm clicking into nested groups, which just picture those nesting dolls. Every time you click, you go into the next doll. And then if I click it again, double click it again. Now I'm just able to, um, edit the group itself. And so what I ended up doing here was um, I cut it up into pieces so that I could put it in piecemeal so that it would keep stay, uh, the resolution would stay high. And I'm not gonna, again, I'm not gonna show you how I did that because it takes too much time. Um, let's see. So that's kind of a quick overview of how you can bring in JPEG files into your model. I'm going to move along to the next tutorial because I'm already at 30 minutes and I've only got a few minutes left to talk about this stuff. Beach ball for some reason means we're waiting. Sometimes if you don't want to wait forever and you, you've already saved the file, you can just go down to SketchUp, left click, and then force quit and just hit force quit as many times as you need to to get it to shut off. So even just uh, turning it off took some time because it was such a big file. So this file that I uh, drew in SketchUp or in uh, Illustrator last week, I'm gonna go ahead and drag it into Illustrator because uh, SketchUp does not accept Illustrator files. You can't import or export an Illustrator file for some reason, but you can import a drawing file. So I'm gonna show you really quickly how you can change your uh, your Illustrator file into a drawing, AutoCAD drawing file. And that's really easy. You just go to File, uh, Export As. Gives you these options here. Um, and then it gives you the option to do AutoCAD drawing or AutoCAD interchange DXF file. Let's say that all you wanted was to have this cut out on the uh, water jet metal cutting software where it cuts this out into metal lines. And they said they wanted to do that with the water jet machine and you need a DXF file. If you drew this, uh, you don't necessarily have to draw it to scale. They can scale it on their end, but ask them first. Uh, this is where you can also save it as a DXF file, which is used for uh, CNC routing machines and stuff like that. But I would be saving this as an AutoCAD file. So I've already done that, saved it as a DWG file. Um, if I open up SketchUp again, go to new, and then to get that drawing, the DWG file in, I actually have to import it. So I'll go to import, opens up, I don't need layers anymore, um, opens up this again. Right now it's just saying, do you want to import JPEGs? Search for the AutoCAD version, and then open up the DWG file, hit import. It's gonna give you uh, some information there about how, you know, if there's layers and all that kind of stuff, there are only two layers, et cetera. And look, it's tiny compared to the person here. So I'm gonna open, I'm gonna scale that bigger to make it easier to work with. Move this gal out of the way. And so right now it's just line work. If I click it and try to hover over it with the push pull tool, there's nowhere, there's nowhere to, no faces on this thing to push and pull yet. 
So I want to be able to get my lines uh, solid so that in between here, there are faces. So again, with groups, you click it once and you get to, uh, it's all, this is all one group. Double click in and you can click into the group itself. Um, when you're starting with the uh, file, this is the origin in SketchUp. Everything can start on this flat space. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and draw a background there. And I want, I want to take this, these solid lines and make them light. I'll explain that in a second. So if I ungroup this in SketchUp, it's also called explode. So I've just exploded it once, didn't do anything. Explode it again, did a little bit more. So if you see right here, these little circles, now they have lighter, these uh, thinner lines and there's faces. That means that I can actually manipulate these now, but wherever the thick lines are, I can't manipulate the face. If I try to lift this, it's not gonna work. So let me uh, zoom out. Um, Want to make sure it's not grouped anymore. These little guys are grouped. So I just use this uh, arrow and then selected what I wanted to select by clicking and dragging and releasing, and then uh, right click, explode again, just to try to get everything exploded. And some of the, so some of these lines are ready to be extruded, and I can manipulate this shape, but not all of them are. And when I first got SketchUp and there were no tutorials. The only way that I could figure out to do this was to um, draw these, like I would use my line draw, my line tool and start drawing lines. So I would literally have to sew this thing up to try to get, my goal is to try to get all thin lines. And it was really tedious. It really just like, it could take forever. And recently I figured out a faster way. Well, not recently, a few years back, I figured out a faster way to do this. Um, another way, as opposed to just selecting all like this, um, you can uh, do Command A, and it will select everything in your model. Okay, and then to get this all all these faces to be uh, manipulatable, you can uh, do the right click, and then it opens up this box, intersect faces, intersect with model. So I, what I believe is happening is that these lines are intersecting with this other. Uh, face. And then I can click outside and see if it did anything. Not yet. I found out that I had to do this a few times to get it to uh, work. So see, now I've got more thin lines there. Believe me that this seems tedious, but this is saving way so much time. Intersect faces with model. Got some more going there. Now I can zero in on just those thick lines and do um, intersect with model again. Getting closer. Well, you get the idea. So for some reason, this one's not working, but I can go in and manipulate it like this. So let's say that this is all uh, manipulatable. I've got to keep kind of zooming along here. Now I can, um, let's see, I think I have it open over here. There's just moments where I've got to really jump ahead to be able to show you guys what, what I need to show you. So this one's already been done. Turn this guy off. Turn off my illustrator too make things move faster. Um, so now I can manipulate this by you, uh, hovering over it with the push pull tool. And again, I can either do it by eyeball or I can do it by distance. I'm just gonna hover it by eyeball, say to go around there. And then I can go around and do the same thing to each one of these. If I want these to be the same size, I'm holding down the left mouse. And if I hover over and drag my mouse over to this guy, I'm. If you can see, it's it's saying that I'm at the same height as the uh, the piece next to it. The other way to do it fast is if I've already done this a couple times, you can double click, you can hover over a face and double click it, and it'll bring it up to the, whatever height you used last. And I ended up, you know, just doing this to all the faces, maybe doing some different heights, 
stuff like this, just to start getting an interesting shape. So, so what I was doing is I'm taking one of the creatures from my floor design and figuring out how I can make something cool public art wise with one of the shapes. Cause say if I ever did get another public art project, it would be cool to use these shapes again in different ways. Um, so I just started messing around just sketching, which is what SketchUp is great for. And you can design stuff again to scale. And if you needed to send this drawing to a, a to a fabricator or something that needed this to be an AutoCAD drawing, that's what I'm going to show you next week is how to take your SketchUp drawing and put it into AutoCAD so you don't have to go or put it into Vectorworks so that you don't have to go in there and redraw this again in Vectorworks. So um, I'm going to jump ahead to this guy. Let's say I think this thing might make an interesting shade structure. Okay. So sometimes to be able to move objects around, you can just use the move tool and try to move, uh, move them around, rotate them around. Um, this is a thing that takes practice to be able to know where you are in the space and how high you're moving things kind of free form. But one thing that's easy to do if you wanted to uh, move it up and down to scale is draw a little box somewhere outside the object that you're using that you want to manipulate. And just have that over there. I'm going to, whoa, that's new. Um, this is what I meant by group everything also. Before I forget, I really got to tell you how to, to make sure you group everything. I forgot to mention this before. So right now, if I set this box on top of this plane and uh, select it all, what I did was triple click to select it all. If I want to just select one face, you can click once. If I want to select this face and its edges, you can click twice, double tap. If I want to select this entire box, I can click it three times and it'll select the entire box. But because it's sitting on this face, it thinks it's part of this. And I really want to be able to move the box. So if I wanted to try to move the box over, I'm going to move this whole object. So, and again, like if I wanted to make a box and move it around, I group it, going left click, make or right click, make group. And then I can move this around. If I decided I wanted to put it next to this box, because it's grouped, it's not going to stick to this one. So I can move it around back and forth, etc. But if I stick it there and ungroup it, which is explode, explode on SketchUp, and then move around over here, and I'm like, oh, I want to move this box. Since it's ungrouped, I'm kind of messed up. I can't, I can't move the box anymore because it's stuck. So if you're going to build a complex shape whoops i say i want to layer make a stack of these or something i would want to group them every time and command g also groups you can hover over just part or triple click group So I can hover over just the one I want, or I can hover over two of them, or I can hover over all three of them, or I can hover over more than one object and, and get them all, or I can do command A and it'll select everything. Okay, so that's the whole uh, group everything. Make sure you group your each object that you make. This whole thing is one object, so I can't pull this disk off you know, without actually having to go in and like try to remake it. So this is just one solid object just because I was working at speed. But if I wanted to say, move this up or down and be really accurate, I can select it and then grab the move tool and go over here to this line that's already got some nice up and down left to right coordinates and start and I click the bottom corner here and then I'm moving my mouse up and then I can type in 10 feet uh, down at the bottom and it'll put it at 10 feet high. There's my little person just to kind of double check how that's going to look. Then I need to have a, um, some kind of column or something to hold it up there. I'm realizing I'm already at, uh, 45 minutes. So I need to blast through this <laughs> so I could show you one more thing here. Um, let's see. Actually, let's just start down here. Oops. I only want to select that part. 
You can unselect by holding shift down and unselect other objects. Make that a group. And then this is where it gets tricky trying to grab an object and then nest it onto another object. I end up trying not to move it back and forth. I know this face is parallel. So I will click down on the face and, and I'm moving my mouse down here, but moving back and forth. So there's a bunch of tricks I could show you. I wish I had more time, but um, we're already uh, getting too far into this. So I wanna show you, I'm gonna jump ahead again to show you why geolocation is important. It's a big file. Okay, so I was gonna show you, since I showed you already how to open up geolocation, I did the same thing here. Um, I decided I picked a, a corner in my old neighborhood on 75th Avenue in Camelback where I used to go to this 7-Eleven all the time. And I thought it'd be cool to put a public art project back in my old neighborhood. So I, um, you know, used those uh, shade structure type things that I just showed you how I started to draw and just started messing around with where to put them in the space. Um, and I thought, well, maybe there should be something under there. So I turned one of them into a fountain. You can go on, uh, we have a 3D warehouse in SketchUp that has a bunch of objects already created. So if I type in, which I've already done, type in public art, there's a bunch of models already done, designed by different people. That you just click on and add to your model. It's handy. So if you wanted to draw a room or something really quick, just uh, a chair or something that people work. That's where I got this Volkswagen. I didn't have to draw it. About seven or one. So again, what I wanted to show you was geolocation. sense of where this thing is in space. That uh, SketchUp webinar that talks more about geolocation will explain to you how to uh, drop in more higher resolution file. This is just a yeah. just yeah. I think maybe your hand has covered up your mic on your computer. Oh, okay. Sorry. Well, I don't know if I said anything that important, but this is the most important thing about the geolocation thing is that in SketchUp, if you put your objects to exactly to the GPS coordinates, you can um, see the shadows that the actual sun will make at different times of year. So if you look up here, we're at August 16th at 10 o'clock in the morning. And so you can test your model um, to see where the shadows are gonna land. So because I've made these things gigantic, the shadows are never, you know, in my mind, I think it'd be cool to, you know, have this uh, fountain thing shaded but the reality is it's it's not always shaded because these are so tall. So I would have to either drop these down or move them closer together. But you can just manipulate the months of the year by moving the slider back and forth. So now we're in March, uh, October, and you can see that like 10 o'clock in the morning, what the, the sun is like. So this is, this is west, this is uh, east, south, north, and the sun is gonna track from 10 o'clock there's like one o'clock in, in the afternoon when it's the sun is high in the air there. Okay, and then one last thing before I, so we have at least 10 minutes to chat. There are different plugins created by third parties that allow you to render SketchUp. So I have one here. Um, it's called Twilight Render version two, and it was free. And since I don't have time to show you exactly how that program works, I'll show you the end result. So all I did was hit render and it rendered the light. You could put light, uh, different like light fixtures in if you wanted to, I didn't in this case, but um, this would be a really quick way to uh, dazzle people with your model and get funding for your project or um, just give people an idea of exactly how your project could look in the space. Okay, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop there. Great, Bill. This is wonderful. It's so great. How to unshare my screen. Okay. Okay, super. I have been tracking some questions. So I'm going to start from um, the first question. 
and then we'll work our way down. If you have any other questions while we're going through these answers, please type them in the chat box and we'll try to get to all of them that we can. Um, so the first question is from Cheryl Marine. Um, Bill, she would like you to talk about what Adobe Suite or package that you use or you would recommend. So I got the one that has, it's the Creative Cloud uh, Suite, which is, I think it's just called Adobe CC and it's updated version 2020. All I really needed was um, Illustrator, uh, Photoshop, and um, InDesign. And then it ends up giving you for, I think it's like $60 a month or something like that. It ends up giving you all these other programs that you can use as well with it that I don't really use. I think it's called Spotlight. I don't know what the other ones are, but it turned out there was one on there. Um, oh shoot. Now I can't think of the name of it. Um, but I ended up using it for my website. Shoot. I need to remember what it's called. Um, if I, if I remember in the next minute, I'll, I'll let you know, or I'll uh, type it in the comments. Um, Portfolio, it's called Adobe Portfolio. And I was able to create my entire website using Portfolio, so I didn't have to buy um, another uh, program to create a website with, which was nice. Cheryl, does that answer your question? I think she's muted. Uh, yeah, I think so. She says, perfect. All right, next question is from Solomon uh, Batsoff. Um, Hi, Bill, thank you for your tech advice. What is your contact info for future information? Um, Bill, I will let you handle how you want to share your contact information. Um, you can find it on my website, and there's a spot on there that it says contact. It just it's basically sends you to my email address, which is bill.dempo.com. And I'm happy to answer your questions. Um, I also posted the link uh, in the chat box to the Justin Geis SketchUp tutorial channel on YouTube. Um, if you guys want to dig a little deeper, that's um, the YouTube channel that Bill recommended. Um, next question from Shannon Land. Uh, Bill, do you ever use Wacom? For your work, Shannon, do you want to clarify that question? You might want to unmute yourself. A, a Wacom. Does Bill ever use a Wacom for his work? And that's the the pen stylus. Yeah, the the tablet with the pen. Yes. I have before, but for Photoshop only. Um, I had a project where I needed to basically color in, similar to coloring in like a comic book or something. So I created all the line work in Illustrator. And then imported the line work into Photoshop and then created a second layer and used the Wacom, Wacom, or however you say it, uh, stylus to color in between the lines. Okay. That answers my question. Thank you. Cool. Thanks. Um, next question is actually one from me. Um, you mentioned a SketchUp webinar on geolocations. Do you have a link for that that you could share with us? Yeah. It's yeah. Really in my email. Um, you don't have to share it right now. We can maybe email it out to the I thought I had it. Yeah, I'll email, I'll email it to you guys. Okay, great. Um, and then I just made a comment about the um, shadow features, the lighting features. Those are really, really helpful, um, especially here in Phoenix where a lot of our outdoor work is impacted and um, influenced by the sign and the shadow. So thank you for sharing that bit of information. It's a great thing to pay attention to when you're working on projects that are outside um, and are providing shade, which a lot of our projects are interested to do. Um, are there any other questions anybody would like to um, address at this time? Um, you're welcome to unmute yourself and. I think that um, um, you can probably just do the search of and search webinars for that. Just in case I can't get you guys the email, um, just to go ahead and search sketch up webinar geolocation, and I think it will. Be 
right? Okay, anyone else from the Office of Arts and Culture want to add anything before we wrap up? Just a quick thank you and a reminder to everybody that uh, the grants for artists who have suffered financial loss during COVID are still available, I believe, through tomorrow. And so if you've been an arts professional or artist and somehow lost gigs or suffered some form of financial loss due to the, the virus, um, please go to phoenix.gov slash arts and um, check out the qualifications that are required for that and the criteria and please submit uh, if you think uh, it can benefit you. Thanks, Bill. Thank Thanks, you. Katie. Thanks, Barry. Thanks to Elizabeth and Doug who are out there and thanks all of you for joining us again next week same time 10 a.m. and it's the vector works so please sign up and uh, hope to see all of you then awesome see you guys. super thank you everybody